he isn't talking about me. He's talking about the Laporte City Attorney. And here's the thing is they're trying to turn my public records request for these documents from the court and from the clerk's office and to me trying to get them from Judge Hall. And the city is not the county. The county is not the city. The county is in possession of them. The city refuses to follow the court order. The, the clerk's office has a copy of them. And I personally don't give a shit what the city attorney is telling me about it all. Because my request is directed towards the clerk of court, which is an elected county official, and the circuit court judge slash circuit court, both of which are not the city. This is Nick Otis giving me unsolicited legal advice because he's too stupid to realize that on April 10th, 2018, he was there over 13 pages of attorney-client privilege, work product privilege, and deliberative materials. Because that's what I filed March 2nd, 2018 to get. I didn't file for 12 pages of police reports that he insists is what this whole case is about. From the first filing that initiated this case, I was asking about 13 pages of attorney-client material. Emails. He later refuses me incident reports about pat downs at City Hall. And that's what the 12 pages are in regards to. However, all three of those four page police reports mention the trespass list, which, if you're going to claim these 12 pages are 13 pages, you need a 13th page. And being that all four or all three of those reports mentions the trespass list, I would presume that would be attached to one of them. But to give me the trespass list is risky. So you have to give me the original 13 pages that I filed for. It's interesting because the county attorney seems to know exactly what pages we're talking about. this the 13 pages that were withheld as attorney-client privileged by the city of Laporte? It's amazing because Mr. Friedman's, a, you know, he's a thinker. He's not an idiot. Best I can tell, he seems to be not as stupid as a lot of his, uh, you know, many of the people that are involved in his profession. That R&D might actually mean something, Republican versus Democrat, because he seems to be making a lot of the Republicans look really stupid. Anyway, so yeah, the documents, the 13 pages, were submitted to the LaPorte County Clerk of Court and to the Circuit Court. They were ordered to be disclosed to me October of 2019. The Court of Appeals denied the appeal. We filed a motion claiming that we didn't understand which 13 pages the judge was talking about. We thought he was talking about 12 pages, so we gave him 12 pages, and, and we thought that would be good enough, even though they're not the right ones. So the 13 pages of emails, we didn't know you meant those 13 pages of emails, so we found us a judge who's going to let us do a bunch of stupid stuff on the record, and we filed a new motion six months ago. That's nah, been like four. But anyway, this judge hasn't ruled on it. 
And it's because it's risky business. He would be completely undoing all these other uh, uh, orders. Anyway, the city filed a motion for determination by the special judge regarding attorney. Co so he wants a whole new hearing on the matter. He wants he wants a whole new judge, and he doesn't want me involved. You see, he doesn't. <laughs> he just insists that I'm. I don't know what I'm talking. About. I can't count a baker's dozen. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Forgot about this. He he more than welcome. You are free to file whatever pleading or response you deem necessary with the court. Anyway, how does he get his new judge? He accused me of basically checking in on a motion that hadn't been ruled on and 12 pages isn't 13 so i asked what was where is the last page and when i contacted the court he called it ex parte communication and claimed that i was intimidating the judge that's the ethical violations that uh jason's talking about this is when I called the court and he answered the phone and basically had this judge handle unfinished business because that's his job, the attorney got all butthurt and accused the judge of ex parte communication with me, even though this says it's fairly normal to con... I'm sorry, rule LR46. LR46, that means local rule 46, which is designating... Laporte County. So these are our local court rules. These aren't even the state rules. These are specific to Laporte County, which, <laughs> oh man, this is hilarious. Anyway, yeah, fairly normal to reach out to the judge before filing a lazy judge motion, which is what a 53-1 is. Anyway, so, oh, look at all these court orders. So, number A makes it, you know, issue, you know, is a the original order that I get arrested with. Uh, B is the order from October of night of 2019, where the city is ordered to release the 13 pages of attorney work product emails um, within 21 days or be, you know, basically in contempt of court. Um, C is the recusal where the judge. Pretty sure this is the one where he says that he um, he calls the city attorney a cyst or says that the city attorney has created a cyst within this case. He also outlines constitutional rights violations and he gets pretty vocal. He gets pretty upset with being accused of ex parte communication. I believe he's probably also upset with with Mr. Otis accusing me of intimidating the judge. That would mean that the judge is being intimidated. Not that he's a judge and he knows the difference between, you know, the laws and stuff, and he can interpret them. He can pass judgment. No, he's he's being intimidated clearly by me. Then D is where once, you know, the judge that wrote A, B, and C recused himself and basically said that the city attorney put him in a position to where he felt that he had to recuse due to the severity of the accusations that have been involved. You know, then they go, the clerk basically, you know, bounces these around and bounces them around and bounces them around until eventually, oh, there's no more judges left. And then we get a, a certification to the Indiana Supreme Court and they give me this judge, Kim Hall, that's on all three of my civil cases. Naturally, he's a Republican. It's amazing how I can have six cases in the control of two Republicans. Even there's a whole schedule of all these different judges that they got to go through. And if you skip over the Democrats and you let somebody else get those special judges and then you wait for me and wait for me and wait for me and then, oh, a Republican popped up, Synthrog Morton's case to him. That's how you end up with three, four, five, six months in between cases. It's not because Kathy Crowback was an idiot. It's because Kathy Crowback was helping. 
which is why there needs to be a process to challenge the clerk's activities because the docket is used like a Bible. The docket speaks for itself. You know, the, the judge currently has all these. <laughs> he, uh, he quotes the docket basically as, as his reasoning for doing a lot of things because the docket says that it happened a certain way, whether it obviously didn't or not. Anyway, he does not attach the Court of Appeals ruling, which says that the appeal is denied. So in D, when these are made uh, uh, confidential again, it's only based upon there being an open an appeal. Once that appeal is closed, I believe that this jurisdiction this judge has to rule these as confidential is thereby gone. As soon as the Court of Appeals ruled on this in October of 2020, that confidential designation dissipated because it was only attached to the appeal, which means these documents have been ordered released to me long ago. The appeal is non-existent. Him filing, you know, he went judge shopping and found him a judge and he thinks, you know, that this judge is going to, uh, uh, Rehear the whole case basically in secret. No hearing, you know, the judges. But it's been like four months, and I don't know if this judge is going to do it. I just don't think he's going to. But, yeah, 12 pages, 13 pages, what's the difference? Especially if the 13 pages, as the Court of Appeals points out. Um, let, me, let me see if I can find that attachment. can't. It's not on here. Anyway, the Court of Appeals basically says that they are emails from the former city attorney, Rebecca McQuaig, um, basically telling, telling local officials how to deal with me, um, being that they go on to commit multiple civil rights violations under her advice. Um, I believe that it's, you know, it's about time for the public to see these. Um, it's it's time for me to see them. It's time for the city to show what they've been backing up all these years. Um, they've been operating off of the advice of of this attorney. You know, she's been gone since 2017. Um, I file for these these 13 pages like six months after she takes a job in Indianapolis. So the city, you know, they know that there's something in these 13 pages that's that's going to be bad. Um, it, it's going to be real bad. And they've lost the appeal. Because they didn't even go in here and argue that this that these 13 pages were attorney-client privilege. Because this dude's so stupid, he got himself confused on what public records he was in court to argue about. Even though my initial filing is clearly designated... Yeah, even though my filing is clearly designated to reflect this, is this the 13 pages that were withheld as attorney-client privileged by the city of LaPorte? Yes, it is, Shaw County attorney, who's not an idiot, obviously, because it's it says that in bold black print across the top of the first page of my filing, motion to remove attorney work product designation. Like, I quote the city as 13 pages. I don't say 12 pages. Clearly, this is what it's about. But the city attorney got himself confused because he's an idiot and went to court and argued about the wrong pages. And the judge in, where is it? B, this one right here. God, this is hilarious. It is clear that more pages of record exist than just the 12 pages of incident reports. The city withheld 
13 pages of documents. There are 13 more pages of documents that have been withheld and to which petitioner has a right to disclosure. This is why they don't want me in front of a Democrat judge. They want me in front of their crooked Republican ones. He spells it out. Dismissal of criminal charges do not serve as an adequate remedy to avoid disclosure of evidence which petitioner was a defendant. Um, regardless of which track is taken, petitioner is entitled to additional documents which responded admitted to withholding previously. This judge sounds so scared and intimidated. Nick Otis was so right. This court seeks to avoid a circular discussion, but will remind all parties that Indiana law starts with a strong presumption of transparency and a public right to government records. Respondent has repeatedly failed to meet its burden to withhold these documents from petitioner. further underlies petitioner's right to access these documents on a federal constitutional basis. Within 21 days from October 21st, or fuck around and find out. You heard the judge. He ain't playing around no more. Tired of this nonsense. Accuse him of being a punk. He said he ain't no, he ain't intimidated by me. He just cares about the law. Let's see what else the judge had to say. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and recuse for the integrity of the system. But before I do, I'm gonna make sure that Nick Otis knows loud and clear that I didn't recuse because he told me to. Ex parte communications. Simply untrue and undermines respondents' assertions to a great degree. The city withheld 13 pages. This directly conflicts with the respondent's statement in paragraph 27. So he says, this is the judge saying, hey, you, you filed this, you filed this motion and you are claiming that there's 13 pages. But then you claim there is not a 13th page missing. It simply does not exist. Directly conflicts. If he was under oath, this would be perjury. Respondent now questioning the validity of its own statements. Nick Otis is now questioning his own statements, or the city, rather. Either they are part of the, these 12 pages are part of the 13 pages, or they're not. Either way, there's at least one extra page that the plaintiff has a right to receive. But the, the court didn't ask the city to respond, Your Honor. They didn't hold our hand through it without a shred of merit or logic. Now, this is a judge talking about an attorney. An exhaustive reading of the Indiana Rules of Trial Procedure. Jesus. So, he, I mean, he is going in on him. Um, this court can find no instance. 
In the rules or case law where cardinal principles such as judicial efficiency are summarily tossed aside in favor of a default practice of micromanagement by a tribunal. We're not going to hold your fucking hand. we got other stuff to do. What's he say? This court views any controversy regarding the respondent and the respondent's counsel. So the city and Mr. Otis as an issue between the city and their counsel. Hmm. Yeah, so the judge goes in on him quite a bit. Wait, this court holds me to the same standard as an attorney regarding trial procedure. However, this court takes note of plaintiff's diagnoses of autism spectrum disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. This court takes pride in its accessibility to all persons in the community, thanks in no small part to the professionalism of its staff. I would have to agree, Your Honor. This court is proud that its staff is capable of maintaining the public's faith in the judiciary by being able to let a person or party meant to the staff without creating a prejudice or other impropriety which may affect the court's decision. Such is the case here. Plaintiff is understandably upset with the state of the case and likely had aggravated sy symptoms consistent with his conditions. Inquire to the staff of chief regarding the staff status of his case. Plaintiff inquired if the court will be making a ruling on a motion filed more than a year ago. Anyway, <sighs> the court was free to take judicial notice. Um, anyway, so... This court felt it was certain that disclosure would be resolved via discovery. All par parties were aware of plaintiff's alleged conduct and actions taken in order to secure the records he sought. So he's saying basically everybody knows I got arrested trying to get these public records. He assumed that these would be part of the discovery process. Well, you had too much faith in the Republican judges, Your Honor. Sorry about all that. Oh, I love this part where he goes in and talks about the transcripts not accurately reflecting what we were talking about, which is why I always request audio. Such transcriptions of conversations are highly reliant on tone, inflection, and an established communication pattern between the speakers. The same has been found throughout the entire legal profession when it comes to understanding how a particular conversation took place. Anyway, the city's counsel neglects that the only request communicated by me to court staff or by court staff to this judge is the need to rule on a pending motion. At best, the meaning and implication of these recordings and transcripts is best to be fully litigated before a trier of fact. What he says there is, this is best handled in a civil court or in front of a ministerial officer, like maybe a attorney disciplinary hearing. At worst, respondent, the city, presents a gross misstatement of the facts, bordering on a fraud against the tribunal and defamatory against the conversationalist while continuing to step on plaintiff's constitutional rights and violating the state's Presumption of transparency. <laughs> then he goes on to say, we can't even find proof that you gave us these documents. The court does not issue a finding about any of the allegations in the present motion from the city 
which point to a violation of professional or ethical conduct. Without further addressing the issues, this court's initial appra appraisal is that respondent improperly, the city improperly places burdens and presumptions on parties and staff, which then appears to argue that no communication outside of a filing would be proper. We of the legal profession are under the obligation to avoid tainting the judicial process via ex parte communications. However, this court is not aware of a stance that all out-of-court communications are to be considered verboten ex parte, which means basically forbidden. This court finds that there is no basis for improper communication or ex parte communication as each of the allegations made by respondent are without merit because this court also communicated with the city of Laporte's counsel's office or the communications were to issues already in the record. Even if improper communication did exist, the staff ensures that I am unable to manipulate the court's decision. Denied. He denies his change of venue. Then he also says, The court does not find or concede to any of the allegations in the city of Laporte's motion. This court does find that the city of Laporte's counsel's antagonism towards the plaintiff, me, so Nick Otis's antagonism towards me, the court staff and its staff, as well as misstating the standards in judicial and legal conduct, has created a cyst within this case that taints the judicial process and thus threatens impartiality. Resultingly, the court moves sua sponte on its own to recuse itself. He was not too happy with Mr. Otis. Anyway. Oh. Anyway. Found himself a judge that may may want to do all this, so I found myself a loophole, which is basically the court and the clerk's office is in possession of them. In my, the way I can tell, they're, they have been deemed by the Court of Appeals to not, to, to not be confidential. Like, they were public record. He appealed it. It was denied. Plain and simple. So any any order that a judge made to make them confidential while the appeal was ongoing, once the appeal was settled in October of last year, that shit became null and void. So what's going to happen is, is I'm going to file, you know, in court against the clerk's office and likely the circuit court. And it'll be in regards to this new public records request that is submitted to county officials for documents that they have. And if they're claiming they're confidential due to Kim Hall's order, well, I guess we'll go to court and talk about that. Anyway, I'm going to get off here. This has been a long one. Deuces. Thanks for watching.